Global News would like to greet you and everyone. Today, we will help you update important international events, while bringing multi-dimensional perspectives and deep reflections on current issues. Topic going on in the world. Right now are the main news that will be in the program. Trump lawyer questions Stormy Daniels, account of sex with Trump. U.S. asylum change aims to speed up some rejections at Mexico border. Deaths in Brazil floods rise to 107. Horse rescued from rooftop. Donald Trump's lawyer sought to show inconsistencies in porn star Stormy Daniels' various tellings of a 2006 sexual encounter she has said she had with Trump, part of an effort on Thursday to undermine her credibility as a witness in the first criminal trial of a sitting or former U.S. president. Her unflattering account of a sexual encounter with Trump in a Lake Tahoe hotel suite while he was married to his wife Melania riveted jurors on Tuesday and reminded U.S. Voters of some of the more lurid aspects of his 2017-2021 presidency as he campaigns to win back the White House this year. Facing questioning on Thursday by defense lawyer Susan Netchelis in a Manhattan courtroom, Daniel stuck to her account. You're trying to make me say that it changed, but it hasn't changed, Daniels told Netchelis. Trump, 77, has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover up his former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen's $130,000 payment to Daniels, 45, for her silence ahead of the 2016 U.S. presidential election about the alleged encounter. Trump has denied ever having sex with Daniels. Trump, the Republican candidate challenging Democratic President Joe Biden in the November 5 U.S. election, has called the trial a politically motivated attempt to undermine his campaign. Prosecutors have said Trump's efforts to obscure the paper trail for the payment to Daniels corrupted the 2016 election in which he defeated Democrat Hillary Clinton by preventing voters from learning about a story that might have swayed their vote. Israeli forces bombarded areas of Rafah on Thursday, Palestinian residents said, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu dismissed U.S. President Joe Biden's threat to withhold weapons from Israel if it assaults the southern Gaza city. A senior Israeli official said late on Thursday that the latest round of indirect negotiations in Cairo to halt hostilities in Gaza had ended and Israel would proceed with its operation in Rafah and other parts of the Gaza Strip as planned. Israel has submitted to mediators its reservations about a Hamas proposal for a hostage release deal, the official said. If we must, we shall fight with our fingernails, Netanyahu said in a video statement. But we have much more than our fingernails. In Gaza, Palestinian militant groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad said their fighters fired anti-tank rockets and mortars at Israeli tanks massed on the eastern outskirts of the city. Residents and medics in Rafah, the biggest urban area in Gaza not yet overrun by Israeli ground forces, said an Israeli attack near a mosque killed at least three people and wounded others in the eastern Brazil neighborhood. Video footage from the scene showed the minaret lying in the rubble and two bodies wrapped in blankets. An Israeli airstrike on two houses in the Sabra neighborhood of Rafah killed at least 12 people, including women and children. U.S. asylum change aims to speed up some rejections at Mexico border A new U.S. asylum change announced on Thursday aims to more quickly reject asylum seekers caught illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border if they pose certain criminal and national security concerns. A limited move to cut down on crossings. A proposed regulation would allow asylum officers to deny claims of migrants convicted of a serious crime, linked to terrorism or posing other dangers to public safety the U.S. Department of Homeland Security said in a press release. The rejections could take place in days instead of a process that can take years, DHS said. Reuters and other outlets reported the plans on Wednesday. The measure will be limited in scope, potentially applying to thousands of asylum seekers per year, sources told Reuters. That would be a fraction of the 1 million caught crossing illegally from October 1, 2023 to March 31, 2024. A DHS official on a call with reporters declined to offer an estimate of how many asylum seekers could be rejected under the proposal. U.S. President Joe Biden, a Democrat seeking re-election in November, took office in 2021 promising a more humane approach to border security compared to his predecessor former President Donald Trump, an immigration hardliner. Under separate guidance issued on Thursday, 
U.S. asylum officers will evaluate during all initial asylum screenings whether asylum seekers could have moved to another part of their home country to find safety rather than travel to the U.S. The latest moves follow a restrictive asylum regulation issued by Biden last year. Billions of dollars worth of U.S. weaponry remains in the pipeline for Israel, despite the delay of one shipment of bombs and a review of others by President Joe Biden's administration, concerned their use in an assault could wreak more devastation on Palestinian civilians. A senior U.S. official said this week that the administration had reviewed the delivery of weapons that Israel might use for a major invasion of Rafah, a southern Gaza city where over one million civilians have sought refuge, and as a result paused the shipment of bombs to Israel. Washington has long urged Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government not to invade Rafah without safeguards for civilians, seven months into a war that has devastated Gaza. Congressional aides estimated the delayed bomb shipments value as tens of millions of U.S. dollars. A wide range of other military equipment is due to go to Israel, including joint direct attack munitions jams, which convert dumb bombs into precision weapons, and tank rounds, mortar and armored tactical vehicles. Senator Jim Rich, the top Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, told reporters, Rich said those munitions were not moving through the approval process as quickly as they should be, noting some had been in the works since December, while assistance for Israel more typically sails through the review process within weeks. Biden administration officials have said they are reviewing additional arms sales, and Biden warned Israel in a CNN interview on Wednesday that the U.S. would stop supplying weapons if Israeli forces make a major invasion of Rafah. The death toll from severe flooding in southern Brazil has risen to 107, civil defense said on Thursday, as rescue operations continued and authorities began to see the cost of recovering from the devastation in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. In a dramatic symbol of the disaster, rescuers saved a horse that had been trapped precariously for the days on a rooftop in a badly flooded town. More rains are forecast in the coming days. Raising fears that water levels will rise further in the inundated state capital of Porto Alegre and nearby town where streets have turned into rivers. At least 136 people are still missing and more than 165,000 have been displaced from flooded homes and rescued by boats and helicopters. Television images showed the horse straddling the roof of a farmhouse on the outskirts of Canoas, a town north of Porto Alegre. The animal was secured by firemen and loaded into a Zodiac inflatable boat to take it to safety. Governor Eduardo later said initial calculations indicate that Rio Grande do Sul will need at least 19 billion reais, $3.68 billion to rebuild from the damage, which has extended into farm areas around the capital. The effect of the floods and the extent of the tragedy are devastating, he said on social media. In Brasilia, the federal government estimated the fiscal impact of the flooding at 7.7 billion reais, $1.49 billion, mostly due to the injection of funds into a support program for small businesses hit by the floods. Switzerland and the Netherlands, two of the favorites to win Eurovision 2024, secured spots in Saturday's grand final alongside Israel despite large protests against the country's participation and booing during its performance. Some 100,000 visitors have gathered in the southern Swedish city of Malmö for the annual Kitsch Fest, under heavy police presence as authorities brace for possible unrest. Swiss rapper and singer Mimo, 24, qualified from the second semi-final on Thursday with the song The Code, as did Joost Klein, 26, of the Netherlands with his song Europapa. Singing this song in front of a live audience and knowing that so many people are listening made me really emotional. Nemo said during a press conference following the semi-final. The song, a drum and bass, opera, rap, and rock tune, is about Nemo's journey of self-discovery as a non-binary person. Israeli solo artist Eden Golan, 20, and her song, Hurricane, also qualified for Saturday's grand show, which will feature performances from 26 countries. Some booing was heard from the crowd before during and after Golan's performance, but also applause and Israeli flags waving, according to a Reuters journalist in the auditorium. The recent news also ended our global news program. 
Thank you for your attention and follow up. Please continue to accompany us on our journey to discover the world situation. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new information. Goodbye and see you again.